OK, thanks, Stan. Just some context uh, for this, uh, this question. Uh, in this morning's news poll, 64% of Australians said that they support the government's approach to the changes to superannuation. Of those, coalition voters, 54% approve that change. But what I don't understand, Andrew Bragg, is why or why do you keep insisting that this money is people's own money when clearly that's just not true? Well, thanks, Phil. I mean, it is their money. That's the whole point of super. And it's been taken from people's salaries and wages and put into super. So um, I believe, though, that the government has decided to do this as a precursor to other tax changes. So rather than um, junking their off-balance sheet items like the reconstruction fund and uh, banking the commodity price uh, windfall that their budget is receiving, they've decided to raise taxes. And we don't think that raising taxes is, is the right approach. Well, the po but the, the people, according to the polling, um, are certainly approving of it at the moment. Well, we when, don't it come, when it comes to super. Yeah, well, we don't think taxing uh, Australian people is the right approach. And, you know, you are pulling the rug from underneath people. The people that will pay this the most will be younger Australians. So uh, over half a million Australians will be captured by this tax in the longer term. And the government admitted today that it will capture actually 10% of all Australians over the long term. So uh, we think it's a bad idea to introduce a new tax. And it's a tax that's very unusual. I mean, it would be applying to unrealised gains. And we also don't know whether it would apply to the five cabinet ministers uh, that are on defined benefit schemes. So there, there are many questions about this new tax. Let, let me put some of those questions to you, Matt, this is right. And the first, first, first one is that um, this was not something you went to the election um, seeking a mandate to do. But we are taking it to the next election. Uh, and I think that the Australian people will have the opportunity to have their say on it at the next election. This policy, if it, when it kicks in, uh, won't kick in till 1 July 2025. So the Australian people will have the opportunity to vote on it. Um, look, I spoke to a woman in my electorate last week um, who's a single mum, uh, raising a child uh, with a disability, renting. Um, she was phoning me because the landlord had put the rent up by $200 a week. Um, and she was saying she just can't afford it. She was approaching me because she wanted my assistance with getting into public housing. And unfortunately, I had to tell her I can do that to help you. But the waiting list for public housing in New South Wales is eight to 10 years. Um, now, that's heartbreaking that I have to tell someone that. This government has priorities. Uh, all governments have to have priorities about the way they spend taxpayers' dollars. Our priorities are to try and help people, like the woman in that situation, by investing in more public housing, by our, our help to buy scheme to help people get into the housing market. But you have to fund those if that, policies. If that's the and case, we, though... We want to do that by making modest changes to superannuation that only affect 0.5% of superannuation holders, uh, about 80,000 people, um, who have balances of more than $3 million. Now, we believe that that is a modest change that is reasonable and that will ensure that we are able to afford those priorities that we want if for the Australian people. If that's the case, there's also, um, there's also an ongoing commitment to honest stage three tax cuts, which are going to give a huge windfall to people earning the highest incomes in the country. Why don't you scrap those? Well, we don't have any plans to change those. But, but if you're concerned about the people that you talked about, why wouldn't you take the money that's going to flow to the richest and redistribute that? Well, you have to do what we think is, is achievable. Um, and we went to the last election um, committing to deliver those tax cuts that have already been legislated. But you also went um, to the election saying you wouldn't be looking at taxes, and here you are talking about taxes on super. Very good point. Why wouldn't you walk away from stage three if that indeed is going to mean you'll have more money to support the people that you said you care about. Because, because we have to make decisions um, and make balanced decisions about what we think we think is achievable. Um, and we did go to the last election pledging to deliver what have been legislated tax cuts. See, we'd, we'd have to go and unwind what have been legislated tax cuts. Um, the difference with superannuation, uh, I think, is that it's a modest change that we are taking to the next election and the people will have the opportunity 
to, uh, to make a, a call on it. I'll just go back to Andrew Bray quickly on this. Um, you, you were the ones in your, your government that instituted just these types of tax cuts for the rich. Um, why w Isn't there an acknowledgement now that tax does need to be changed and that we have to look at tax reform in this country if we're able to, to be able to meet our spending demands into the future? Well, the government's spending $45 billion on off-balance sheet items. They're spending $15 billion on the reconstruction fund, which is a massive slush fund for unions. Uh, and in addition, they're not showing any fiscal restraint. You've got spending... At so you don't think it's necessary to look at tax reform? You've got record spending at the moment. So the government's got to pull... They're not doing anything to try and help the Reserve Bank uh, curb inflation. Uh, the government is massively fueling inflation in this country, and that is hurting uh, everyone because the Reserve Bank it, it, is, is raising interest rates because the government won't do its job. But the well, Reserve Andrew, Bank you know separate... that the government... Uh, the, the Reserve Bank makes spending too decisions much money. independent of, spending too of much. government... Um, and we're showing restraint in spending. Any there revenue you know. that's coming into the budget... You're raising taxes. 99% of it, 99% of it is being reinvested in the budget compared to only 30% when you're in government. We're showing restraint. We're making sure that we're providing <laughs> cost of living relief for Australians, but we're doing it in a manner that doesn't fuel inflation, and that is the key, trying to get inflation down because it's eating in to the wages of working Australians and it's making life difficult for the average Australian worker and family and pensioner.